Hi, I am Igor Smirnov, International Grandmaster and a Chess Coach, and it's my pleasure to welcome you into this new video lesson. Today we have a very interesting topic – the secrets of strong players. Obviously, strong players have something that makes them stronger, that helps them to gain victories. And you may have noticed that they are not willing to share these insider secrets with other players. There are a lot of video lessons out there, recorded by strong grandmasters. But in most cases, they just show you some opening moves or some strong moves played in the games of top grandmasters. However, they do not reveal the most important thing. How can they find such strong moves and how can you do the same? And this is exactly what we will be discussing today. Well, of course, I cannot tell you everything within just one lesson, but nevertheless, I'll give you a few powerful practical recommendations that you'll be able to implement and improve your results right after watching this lesson. Before we begin, let me make one last note. During a game of chess, you demonstrate your way of thinking. Strong players know the most powerful techniques for finding strong moves. How can they do it? This is what we will discuss during this lesson. In order to illustrate this difference between the way of thinking of strong players and not that strong, let's have a look at one example. In this position, white played rook takes d6, winning a pawn, and black answered queen e5. And perhaps he wanted to block white's e pawn, and of course, at the same time, black is attacking white's queen and keeping an eye on white's d6 rook. Now I have a question for you. How would you play here as white? You may pause the video and think about it. I'm pretty sure that most players would just take black's queen on e5. Generally, when you have a material advantage, it's good to exchange pieces. However, in this position it's not the best move. If you have learned my previous lessons, then you already know that to take is a mistake. If white takes black's queen on e5, white helps black to activate his knight and to bring it on a good central square. That's why, in such positions, it's better to keep the tension and to let your opponent release the tension. And white played king h2. Now you can see this idea clearly. If white takes black's queen on e5, black will activate his knight and will put it on a good central square. And the opposite situation is applicable for black. If black takes white's queen on g3, then it will help white to activate his king and to bring it closer to center. That's why to take is a mistake, and that's why in such cases it's better to keep the tension. In the game, black indeed took white's queen, white recaptured, and now white has an easily winning position. White can bring the king to f4, then push e5, and he has an extra pawn, and uh, black has a lot of weaknesses, so it's totally winning for white. Here we have seen one secret of strong players. A rule to take is a mistake. It may sound simple, but most players do not follow this rule and do not know about it. Actually, they do an opposite thing. They take whenever they can. Actually, it's easy to explain it. Let's have a look at another example. Let's imagine that you are playing black and you are considering the move d5. Which variations do you need to check before you can play this move? Obviously, you need to make sure that you don't lose something. And so you start your calculation, and you think to yourself, OK, I'll play d5, he'll take, I'll take with the knight, he recaptures, I take with the bishop, he takes with the bishop, I take with the queen, and now you see that everything is fine, and it means that you may play d5. This is a usual way of calculating variations, and after some practice, this becomes your habit. That's why most chess players follow this way of thinking automatically. If they can take something, they start their calculations right from this move. 
However, strong players have their secrets and they know that to take is a mistake. Well, let me make one last note. Uh, of course they don't say that you should never take. Sometimes you can win opponent's material or you may be forced to recapture in order to keep the material in balance. In those cases of course you will take. Uh, for instance, let's make a few moves back in this game. For example, after white took c takes d5, of course black has to recapture, otherwise he will just lose material, so there is nothing to think about, black has uh, no other options but to take. But in this position, white should not take on d5, and this would be a mistake, and white should refrain from making this move, because of the rule to take is a mistake. Actually, I have recorded a separate lesson about this rule and maybe you even have seen it already. If not, you may find a link below this video lesson and I think it will be useful for you. And in any case, I believe it will be useful to repeat this material. Okay, now we can move on to the next rule and let's have a look at the next example. This is a theoretical position of Sicilian defense, knight or foration. Let's make a few moves forward. Black played b4, taking the knight, white retreated. Black played queen c7, h4, preparing an attack on the king side, and black answered d5, taking white center and the e4 pawn more specifically. Okay, and here I'd like to ask you this question How would you play here as white? As usual, you may pause the video and think about it by yourself for a couple of minutes. I'm very glad if you haven't decided just to take the d5 pawn, because as you already know, to take is a mistake, and in this position this is an indeed not the best option. After that, black would recapture with the knight, bringing his piece into center, or taking white's bishop e3 and, and gaining more activity. So white needs to find something better. As we know, we should try to keep the tension and avoid such moves like e takes d5. However, it's not that easy to find a suitable way to keep the tension and to protect the e4 pawn somehow. Uh, white can't play knight g3 because this square is under the control of black's queen. If white plays something like bishop g2, uh, this would place the bishop on a very passive position and after an exchange the g4 pawn will be hanging and black can move his knight to c4, so it doesn't look like a very good option for white. And lastly, if white tries move queen d3, it's quite an awkward idea, black can play knight e5 or knight c5, gaining extra tempos and it's definitely not what white wants. After all, you may be thinking that if you don't have a good way to defend the pawn on e4, then perhaps you just have to take on d5. This is how most chess players think in such situations. However, it has one major drawback. Everything that we've been thinking about so far in this position was focused on opponent's threats and we completely forgot about our own plans. Let me bring up an analogy. It's like the tug-of-war competition. Each party is trying to pull the rope into his direction and the one who does it stronger will win the competition. Similar thing happens in chess. Each player is trying to pull the game into direction that he wants and the one who does it more insistently will win the game. Now let's implement this new approach for this position. We need to shift our focus from black's threats to white's plans. Ok, what is the white's plan here? Obviously white wants to push g5. That's why he played h4 and g4 during the previous moves. White can't push g5 straight away, because after h takes, white cannot recapture and the pawn is pinned. Therefore, white needs to prepare this move somehow and he just needs to 
think how to solve this problem of the Hanin Rook on h1. We can find a couple of ideas for this purpose. For example, we can play bishop h3, covering the line. Then after d takes, white will push g5 successfully. And bishop h3 also takes aim at black's e6 pawn. Maybe white will sacrifice a piece there, or white can push g6 and undermine this e6 pawn. Uh, all in all, this position looks very promising for white, so this is one interesting idea. Let's go back. At the very least, white can just remove the rook, play rook g1, with a similar idea of so pushing g5 and then g6 and developing attack on the king side. That's another alternative. In the actual game, white finds another move with a similar idea. He played bishop f4, attacking black's queen, and after e5, bishop h2. White covered h line with his dark squared bishop, and he is still ready to push g5. Of course, black can't take the knight because pawn is pinned, and that's why black took d takes e4, and white pushed g5. Now white is developing his attack, and uh, this is of course a very complicated position, but white has pretty good chances to develop attack successfully, black should be really careful. For example, in this position if black makes a natural move knight d5, and he's losing immediately, white can take bishop takes e5 for the discovered attack on black's h8 rook. Ok, let's make a few moves back and observe that critical position once again. After we adopted a new approach, we were able to find a lot of interesting and powerful possibilities for white. You may notice a big difference in the way of thinking of strong players and weak players. Being attacked, weak players think how to defend. Unlike them, strong players try to pull the game in the direction that they want, and they always try to keep focusing on their own plans. We can summarize these ideas by stating the rule, offense is the best defense. Well, I'm sure you've heard this saying many times in the past. Uh, however, without a real understanding of this idea, this rule is rather useless. Here I'm not talking about an active defense or a counter-attack or anything like that. Uh, here I'm talking about another approach for the game. It means that you should always try to push your own plan and try to lead the game into direction that you want. It's not about counter-blows or some kind of tactical tricks. It rather relates to your deep understanding of the chess game and adopting the proper approach. Ok, we have learned two powerful secrets of strong players. The first one to take is a mistake. When there is a possibility for exchange, weak players just use it, they simply take. Unlike them, strong players know that to take is a mistake and you should keep the tension. Being attacked, weak players think about defense. Strong players, on the contrary, follow the rule offense is the best defense. It may sound simple, but this is a very powerful technique. And most players do not follow it. Actually, it's easy to explain it, let's have a look at our example once again. Let's say you're playing white and opponent just played b4. You know that you need to move your knight somewhere and such situations happen very often and that's why we have this stereotype in our head. If opponent attacked you, you need to defend. However, as you know, it's not exactly correct and very often you have something more powerful and at least you can try to find something more powerful. Even in this position, white has an option knight c6 with a double attack of black's queen and pawn making a counter blow. Although it does not work in this particular situation, in another position it could work, uh, and it means that you definitely should not make defensive moves automatically.
Now let's train this new knowledge. I strongly recommend that you not only watch this video, but also think by yourself and try to find the best moves by yourself. It's a very good idea to pause the video sometimes and think about the position by yourself first and only after that resume the video. Of course right now we will be focusing on the topic of this lesson, on the rules to take as a mistake and offense is the best defense. That's why we will not analyze every move and that's why I will pass opening moves without analysis. Let's start from this position. Here white played knight h4, attacking black's bishop. Where will you place the bishop? Of course, we should go forward, bishop g4, attacking the queen, bishop g6 is an option, but it's a passive option, while bishop g4 is attacking the queen, that's why black has chosen this idea. White played f3, bishop h5 and g4. White is still trying to capture this bishop. And now this is another question for you. How would you play here as black? Of course black can simply retreat to g6, but we know that offense is the best defense and that we should try to find something active first of all. That's why black played knight d5, taking white's h4 knight with his queen. Now if white takes g takes h5, it will break white's pawn structure and give black excellent uh, attack against white's numerous weaknesses and that's why instead of that white played knight g2 and black retreated bishop g6. Now here's a new challenge for white. Black is attacking white's knight c3. How can white protect it? Of course white can protect it with a bishop or with a queen somehow, but we know that offense is the best defense. So you, need, you should try to find the attacking move first of all. And that's why white played knight a2, attacking the bishop. Currently it's protected by the knight, but of course white can first take the knight and after that capture the bishop. That's why black retreated. And now white can attack once again, playing e4. You see that white is able to gain extra temples constantly. Black played knight b6, bishop b3, knight a6, a5. Okay, these are just simple development moves. And black played bishop b4. Okay, now black is attacking white's pawn on a5. And that's now the position when white needs to deal with it somehow. What do you think about it? Instead of thinking about black's threats, let's focus on the white's plans. What is the white's plan here? During the previous moves he expanded on the king side and probably white wants to continue his attack there. And that's why he played h4. Now black has no time for taking the a5 pawn because white will answer h5, capturing black's bishop. Black played h6, giving a free square for his bishop. Now the situation is pretty similar. The white's a5 pawn is still under attack and white still can use the rule offense as the best defense. So he just keep pushing his own plan and played g5. Ideally black would like to close the position, but here after h5 white can go knight f4 and keep attacking the bishop and also those pawns are still vulnerable, vulnerable so it's not that easy for black to keep the position closed. That's why instead of that in the game he took h takes g5, white recaptured by the bishop. Still black has no time for the a5 pawn because he has to do something about his queen. Once again, you can see the power of this rule of offense is the best defense. And if black just moves the queen somewhere, like queen c7 or something like that, then white may continue his attack with the moves like knight f4, h5, and his threats are on the king side are pretty strong. 
Black decided to secure his position and played bishop e7. You see that defense of that pawn on a5 has been solved automatically without any extra efforts for white. White simply realized his own plan on the king side. Now he played queen d2 to protect the bishop. Black played e5, taking white center. Should white take there or not? Of course not, because to take is a mistake. If white takes there, it will help black to bring his knight on a good central square. White should not do it. That's why white played d5 instead. Black played knight c5, attacking the bishop. Bishop c4, rook c8. Okay, in this position white has a lot of moves to calculate. White can take somewhere on e7, on a6, on c6, and for a weak player it would take a lot of time to consider all these options. Strong players knows that you should keep the tension and you should not take, and that's why he simply played rook d1. Black decided to release the tension and take on g5, but as we know it's very good to let an opponent to make exchange, because in this case he helps you to become more active. In this example, first white placed his queen on more active square, and then he recaptured with a pawn, gaining more space on the king side, getting new h4 square for his knight, and all in all you can see that after black took on g5 it helped white to gain more space and be become more active. Okay, black played bishop h5, knight e3, g6, covering f5 square. And here white took on c6 finally. Uh, generally we should avoid such moves, but in this position white has uh, a certain tactical reason for this move. After black recaptured, white took an a6 and go knight c4, and there is no good way for black to protect his e5 pawn and other weak pawns. Black has a couple of weak pawns right now, and he cannot protect them. If he tries rook e8, white will play knight d6, making a fork on black's rooks. That's why in this particular position, d takes c6 was a good idea for white. As we discussed before, if you can win opponent's material, then of course you can and should take. That's what happened in this game. Black answered f6, g takes, knight takes e5, and white won pawn, rook e8. Black is attacking white's knight, and if knight goes away, black will try to grab that pawn on f3. What should white do? What do you think? Of course, white should think about attacking moves first of all, because offense is the best defense, and that's why he played knight to d7. This knight aims at the f6 square, well, currently it just attacks the rooks, and the rook, of course, but if black takes an f3, then after an exchange, bishop takes, taking the rook, the rook will go somewhere, let's say rook f1, and then finally white will play knight f6 check, making a fork on black's king and rook. This is losing for black, that's why in the game he made another move, after knight d7 attacking the rook, black simply retreated, rook f7. Now the f3 pawn is still hanging, and what should white do about it? Of course white can protect it somehow, like in g2 or something like that, but instead we know that we should keep pushing our own plan. White was trying to occupy the f6 square, making a fog, and so we can just push this plan once again. White played rook d6, preparing knight f6 check. Black played king g7. The f3 pawn is still hanging, and still we should think about our own plan. Once again, if white wants to occupy the f6 square, then you need to ask yourself how can I realize my plan. White played e5. Now if black takes pawn with a bishop, then after knight f6, white realized his idea, now the rook is attacked, and also it interrupts connection between 
black's rook and the bishop and thus white can grab the bishop on a three. In the actual game black did not take an a3 with the bishop, he took with the rook. Now that's not a question for white. Should white trade the rooks or not? Of course not, because to take is a mistake. If white takes an a3, it will help black to bring the bishop into play and protect the c6 pawn and in general bring this bishop on into more active position. Instead, white can simply take that c6 pawn straight away and attack black's knight on a6. Black played knight b4, white answered rook d6. Perhaps rook c7 was more powerful, but okay, let's just continue with the game. Rook g3, king h2, rook d3. Once again, there is a possibility for white to make an exchange or not to make it. What do you think about it? Yeah, we should keep the tension, we should not take, instead we should try to let opponent take. That's why white played knight c5. And now if black takes on d6, white will recapture with a pawn and this pawn will become closer to the 8th rank. And black just retreated. Now white can push the pawn forward. You see, during the whole game, white does not spend time on defense. Always he's trying to find the way to realize his own plan and to make attacking moves. And thus opponent always have to defend and has no time to realize his own ideas. Here black played bishop g4. He is attacking that pawn on e6. You already know that we need to think about attacking moves because offense is the best defense. And by adopting this approach you can find a lot of ideas for white. White can make check on the south rank with one of the rooks, like rook d7 or rook f7. And another move which is even simpler is rook f4. This is a double attack on black's bishop and knight on the fourth rank. Now black is in a big trouble, in fact he's losing. Anyway, let's Look the game until the end. Rook h8, king g2, bishop h3, king f2. Now the rook is hanging. Black played rook e5, taking white's knight on c5. Now, of course, the white's position is winning, and perhaps there are a lot of ways for a win here, but white used uh, the most appropriate moves. He played rook d7, and he is just using the same idea throughout the whole game. An idea that offense is the best defense. Now black has to remove his king. King h4, oh, sorry, king h6, rook h4, check. Black cannot move the king, otherwise he'll lose the rook, that's why he has to play rook h5. You see that white solved the problem of defense of his c5 knight without making any defensive moves. Black had to use his rook for defensive purpose. White exchanged the rooks and then took the pawn. Black played rook c8, attacking that knight on c5. What should white do about it? Of course white shouldn't retreat. White can push e7 and realize his plan. White wants to promote his e-pawn and he is very close to this goal. Black played knight c6, trying to attack the rook and now after rook a6 black resigned, on the next move white will take the knight, deflecting the rook and then will promote a new queen. We have just analyzed a quite amazing game between two very strong grandmasters. The white player made a lot of sudden and very powerful moves. And what's the most important is that we were able to reveal the secrets of these guys. How can they find such powerful moves? As you can see, when you know the secrets of strong players, everything becomes pretty simple. Although we went through this game very quickly, I'm sure you were able to guess a lot of moves. If this is the case, Sam, please accept my congratulations. It means that you are very close to the level of top grandmasters. <laughs> well, okay, okay, I'm kidding, but 
uh, nevertheless, I'm sure that if you adopt just these two techniques, it will improve your game quite a lot. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, goodbye.